Oh, hey, it's Rob. And I'm up in the kitchen today because uh, I've got another kitchen project going on. So this one is all about lighting. Uh, one of the things that I noticed when I got done with the tile work in the kitchen is that it's very dark underneath the counters. It's uh, really kind of a difficult space to be to see if you want to do anything in the kitchen. So I want to put in under cabinet lighting. I think it looks really good and it's very practical. What I'm using are LED light strips. These are uh, neutral white and they actually look really nice. I powered them up a little while ago. They're pretty bright and as you can see they've got a fairly good density of LEDs. There are three of them per every 25 millimeters. So not quite an inch but close enough to uh, let's just say it's an inch. So three LEDs per inch. They're pretty bright and I got these aluminum channels for the actual mounting and they have <laughs> if I can get one of these out <clears throat> these nice plastic diffusers that fit over the top and just snap in I'm not going to snap it in because I don't want to have to remove it but they snap in over the LEDs and they provide a nice even light that's pretty comparable to fluorescence. As a matter of fact, this is how a lot of the fake fluorescent LED lights work. Now I've already gone under the cabinets and measured and I have the measurements for what each of the cabinets should be. These are numbers that will fit in there with enough space left over to uh, you know, provide for connections and wiring and the like, but uh, will pretty much go end to end across each cabinet. So I'm looking to divide these up into some work zones. Uh, I, I mean, there's one that should go right here. There needs to be a cabinet light here, but it needs to be two different lights because there's this, you know, bang in between them. Uh, so I've got those measured out. That will be at least one zone there. Uh, there's one over here for the corner and I'm not sure if that's going to be one or two. It will probably be one zone just by itself in that corner um, along with this cabinet. So there will be light there and there all at the same time. And then I'm doing a third zone underneath this counter underneath here which is a little bit different and the reason that I'm doing that is because if you're sitting at this little dining room table you can see the bottom of those cabinets and it's going to be uh, awfully bright so there's some other stuff that I want to do there too but to be able to turn those off separately makes a good amount of sense and because I already need the two zones I decided to do three just because it's not that much harder and it has more flexibility now, to be fair, I have done this before. I did it in my kitchen down in the cities. I didn't have these nice aluminum channels, which I think are a great idea. Um, I actually put strips of aluminum tape up under the cabinets and then stuck the LEDs to them, which worked for a while, but the tape that are on the back of some of these LEDs isn't all the best and they started to peel from the edges and then they ran into issues with the wiring so I'm gonna have to redo that but I really like the way it looked and I want to try and replicate that here it's it's much much better for working in the kitchen so the first step in this because I've already calculated the lengths is to mark them on this aluminum and the thing about it is I'm going to have to cut the aluminum and the plastic either at the same time which would allow for the best cut or I'm going to have to mark both of them. I would much rather just mark the aluminum and cut them at the same time uh, but I need to make sure that that's going to be flat enough to sit on the uh, on the miter saw so I can get nice clean cuts. All right, I'm going to do the rest of these, um, and I'm not going to make you sit through it. 
And there we go. I've got 10 of these done. I'm calculating that I only need eight, but having a couple extra is not a bad idea. So now all I have to do is measure and mark. So because these were longer than I thought they were, I thought they were 36 inches, I managed to get these all fit in two six pieces. So I've got some fairly minimal waste. I've got a piece here, this little tiny piece, and then these two, and then these two longer pieces, which I will probably get to use in a different project. This, uh, this one has been glued down pretty well, so after I, I had to let it dry overnight, basically. But uh, this one is now in. I'm going to add these wires in. And I'm going to use a hot glue gun to try and anchor it uh, along here, just because I think that's going to be the easiest. While I'm waiting for the hot glue gun to warm up, uh, I did get this tape. Um, I was looking for some uh, window stick tape, but I think I was, come to think of it, it's probably in the wrong section. But this is a uh, double stick tape that's uh, construction adhesive strength. So I think I'm going to try this and see how it works. I did go downstairs and solder these on um, well, my soldering station is downstairs, so I really didn't want to try and take the camera down and do it because soldering is actually pretty boring. Um, however, I just wanted to show you uh, what this looks like. Yeah, this is probably going to be a little bright for a second, but that is the full brightness with it on. Uh, let's put the lens on. And... And that's what it looks like when the lens is on. Now you can still see the individual LEDs. I don't know if you can, but uh, I can certainly. Um, but it's going to be mounted going down. So it's going to be providing light under the cabinet. So it's more like that. It's not super bright but it is bright enough to add some illumination underneath the counter. There are also these end cap pieces that came with these. Uh, they have these holes drilled in them. They have ones without holes as well. These are really nice for passing the wires through. Oops. You, you, know, you run the wires through the hole, making sure that you have the inside, you know, the prongs facing in. And push those in and you have these nice uh, nicely set up ends so I'm going to repeat that process for the rest of the strips and I will hopefully get those done uh, pretty soon uh, it's gonna take a little bit while because I have some other things that I need to do too but uh, I'm going to call this one now because this is going to take some time and I want to try and get a video out before the weekend um, so the installation video will take a little bit of time but uh, probably going to do three parts there will be um, I mean this is the first one the building of the light strips uh, the second one will probably be the installation and the third one will be wiring so I've got a little surprise in store for the wiring but that's it for now uh, hopefully this was a little bit interesting at any rate and I will see you guys in the next one